After removing poorly constructed rooms from our 110 year old home, we are finally seeing progress on our new 1000 square foot addition. This week, we're focusing on plumbing, foundation, and attempting to restore original doors for the exterior ourselves. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and the renovation of our 110 year old cottage <laughs> in Texas. Obviously, if you guys have caught up on any of the renovation videos, you see that we're very much in a stage of prioritizing drying in the house and closing it up, basically. My contractor and subcontractors are focusing on the building the addition, so that's underway. So simultaneously, while they're doing all of the addition stuff, I'm really prioritizing the windows, the doors, just f figuring out how to get all of this closed in so that when we get air conditioning and the plumbers are coming out, all of that type of stuff is happening. So a big thank you to Dyson for sponsoring this video. More about them later. I really wanna get started this week on the doors, exterior doors to be specific. So we have basically four exterior doors. Oh. Actually, well, we have four exterior doors that we need to work on uh, refinishing and restoring, and then two that are pretty for the primary bedroom going out to the porch. So we have the front door, which is already installed, but on the outside, it's actually painted white, and I want it to be stained and pretty to match kind of flow with my inspiration. So since I want the front door stained, kind of like it is on the inside, I figured we should just do all of the exterior doors the same for a design element and just an overall design direction and all of the doors if you guys don't remember months and months ago I took all of the doors out from the original house reorganized them laid them out and figured out where exactly they would fit and go back into the house so we're using every door and we even needed to buy a few so we have two French doors that are going from the living room out to the patio a covered patio so those two and also the back door so there's four individual doors that we need to focus on. So I'm hoping we can get them stripped and ready and restored. Welcome back to the workshop where I've been working on restoring all the doors and all the hardware. Actually, it's all still here. Um, from when I started kind of organizing them and figuring out what room will have what hardware that was original to the house and then other ones have been kind of designing and putting together and I wanted each room to kind of have its own theme because all of the hardware was so mixed. Some are more intricate and ornate and metal, some are more ceramic, some are white, some are black, they're, they're all a little, little bit mixed so I felt like keeping them in the same room together would help to create some cohesion and flow throughout the house even though it might be a little different and a little bit random throughout the house if that makes sense. Um, so here are all the doors. We have two over there, the front door is installed, the back door is over there already. We need the two French doors. I really did try to be organized you guys but you know many many <laughs> months have passed and uh, my organization has kind of a little bit gone to the wayside, but okay, let's see if we're lucky. Oh my gosh, we just got lucky. Here's one. I'm pretty sure too one of them has glass and the other one is the same door, but it doesn't have glass, so we're gonna have to put glass. It's, it's a whole situation with restoring these doors, you guys. Romeo's got one. That's a big door. Yeah. I'm so excited for this little one, this little linen closet one. It needs a lot of work. But it's gonna be so cute in the primary bathroom. Oh, here it is. Yay. Okay. What color is this on the other side? Brown. Oh, yeah. So one side's already stripped. That makes oh, me yeah. happy. It's so nice having him here. He saves my muscles from all the work. Even though I am proud of how strong I've gotten. So one of you guys actually commented that stripper works better when it's in the shade, which makes total sense that it doesn't heat up too much and dry out, even though we do cover it um, with either plastic wrap or this Dumont paper. I actually liked this stripper when we tried it and tested it on the windows, even though I don't like the stripping process because it's so goopy and grimy and gross. Uh, but I feel like for these doors, a stripper is necessary. So I really liked this one. The Dumont Smart Strip Advanced Paint Remover. It's odor-free, water-based, 100% biodegradable, zero VOC, formulated without hard, all the good things. So it doesn't stink. It's kind of like whippy almost. At least one side of all three of these doors and just let them sit overnight. So I really wanted to get started on this project now and we will see how 
they come together in 24 hours. Also going to be using the specific Dumond paper. I really wanted to see if it was any better or different than just regular old plastic wrap. So if we run out of this, we'll be doing the plastic wrap too, so we can really see the difference there too. In and out of love, never get enough. We never seem to get older when things are going right. You seem to have the time, but when it's hard, you just grow cold up. We should be good, but we keep lighting fires. The words you be, cause we're scared of the silence. We should be good, but we keep lighting fires, fires around ourselves. We should be good, but we keep lighting fires. The words you be, cause we're scared of the silence. We should be good, but we keep lighting fires, fires around ourselves. It's deja vu. times set up a stage of lies say we're done say it's over okay so we are back at my parents house and we've actually been trying to take some breaks during the day because it's been so hot and right in the middle of the day everyone in the town decides to mow their lawn if it's not raining that day i immediately get scratchy eyes and just being outside all day you know my allergies have been kind of crazy since I've been here. And a big thank you to Dyson for sponsoring today's video. Actually, when I first came here to renovate the house, it was at the height of cedar fever in Texas. And it's when all the cedar trees are pollinating. And now that we've started and we'll be continuing home renovation updates in our home long after we move in, I knew that we needed something to help really purify the air from not only allergens, but also all of the pollutants that are released when we're doing projects inside the house. So we have the Dyson purifier with hot hot and cold settings and a formaldehyde sensor. When I first started looking into hair purifiers and I saw the word formaldehyde, I thought of something very unpleasant. I was like, I don't need to worry about that. That's, that's not something that's in my home. I was so wrong. Formaldehyde is a gas that's released from new things that you can bring into your house, like new mattresses, new wood flooring. It's basically like that new car smell that I think we all really like. Like, I like that smell. So the Dyson purifier takes the formaldehyde and turns it into CO2 and water and releases it back into the air. So the filter, you never have to change. Pollutants in the air are often invisible. We can't see them. So one of the features I love about the Dyson purifier is that it has an LCD screen that shows you the level of pollutants in your home. And as it purifies, that level will gradually come down to the green zone. So you get to actually see it clean. And with three levels of filtration, 350 degree oscillation and automatic sensing. So with pollutants that seep into the air, like lighting a candle, the purifier will automatically turn on so you don't even need to worry about it. So not only does the Dyson purifier purify the air, it also looks pretty good doing it. We have the white and gold color and you can even download the Dyson app to control your machine and monitor the air quality inside and outside of your home. So if you guys have been looking to get an air purifier and were like me, and did not know that formaldehyde could be in your home. I'll link the Dyson purifier that I have in the description box below so that you guys can check it out. So while we're here, we need to pick a stain color for those doors that we're stripping. We are going with white dove for the exterior of the house, which is OC17 right here. Love it. And then the trim color that we went with is gray mist. So it's a little darker, Still has some warm undertone, but it gives a little bit of diff, like a differentiation. It gives a little bit of depth without being exactly the same color, which I love. It's working out really well. And then this beautiful little thing, this is going to be our decking for the patio in the front and the back. This is a composite flooring that we're going with and it's in color mahogany. So there's the color palette. I feel like the doors need to be the same color as this. In my head, the door has this richness and the flooring has this richness and then the house is real light. I feel like I really like that contrast when I see it in inspiration pictures. And this mahogany color obviously has like some golden red undertones, which is always a color I gravitate towards. So maybe we could, 
take this to the hardware store with us. Look at the stain options that they have and maybe sample some. I think they'll be really pretty this color, but comment, comment down below what you think about the door and the flooring being the same color. And then when we finally get all of that paint off, we can get to this stage. I brought the samples with me because you can never be too sure. I don't want to guess at this color at all. You know what? I actually Googled what is the best outdoor stain. This brand, Ready Seal. It was UV blocking, water resistant, no back brushing for fences, decks, shingles. With, look how red the mahogany is. I don't know how we would ever be able to tell unless we buy them. You know what I mean? Olympic maximum, six years on decks, eight years on fences, siding. This is dark mahogany. But I feel like Oxford Brown looks more similar. Or maybe a mix of the two? Do you see that people like the bear over the Olympic at all? Uh, well, people definitely prefer the bear because we, have, we just have more of it. More off. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we rarely ever get the Olympic. That's the only reason we have oh. Because we're, I don't know why they're having problems. Because it's like almost there. Mm -hmm. So this is now 50% more darker than the 50%. Yeah, so it's essentially twice as dark as the original. Form. Okay. It's pretty close. I think it looks good. Okay, so it's early the next morning. It's been on there about 20 hours, and judging from how many layers of paint on the windows we had, I felt like this was gonna be <laughs> kind of the same. I'm gonna test it out and see how well everything worked. It's peeling off. That's it, you put a lot. I did put a lot, yeah. Oh. Look at that. Whoa. Baby, look. So this is clearly going to work. Um, for the most part, my door is actually a little easier than the door Romeo's working on. This one's coming out more in like, like, larger pieces i'm able to scrape it that one's kind of like flaking off that door actually i purchased so we're going to scrape off all that we can off these doors and then maybe reapply some stripper to places that it wasn't as thick until we get everything off you know definitely putting more stripper on the better like really having a thicker coat I can tell like in places that it maybe wasn't as thick, it's not coming off as easy. All right, so the front door had a lot of paint on it. So I've been kind of testing it and I actually applied the stripper twice. I also think since it was the front door when the sun came to that side of the house, it like kind of heated up. So I don't think that it worked. The stripper worked as well as it did on the ones that were in the shade. Seems to be working. Yeah. It seems to be working okay now. After many, many, many hours and even multiple layers of stripper on this door, almost becoming like, is this all worth it? And it is coming off and the stripper works. I even tried power washing it. It helped and didn't help at the same time. I felt like it was messing it up more than it was worth. This just overall is a very tedious process. I do like that stripper a lot. I think it's the best stripper that I've used. I'm kind of thinking I should find some place in the area that actually dips dips, strips, doors, that they actually like dip them into this like tub. Dip them over and over again and then it strips all the paint off. If it was just this door, this would be like the perfect scenario. Get the stripper, spend some time, a couple of days, just really getting everything off and getting it perfect so it can be stained. But for multiple doors, I don't see how this makes sense at all. But it will be beautiful. This is just a process, you guys. 
So the plumbers have been here for the last couple of days, focusing first on roughing in where all of the plumbing items, the tub, the shower, the washer and dryer, the sinks and things are going to go in the addition so that they can pour the slab and the foundation. And then also making their way inside the main house um, for the guest bathroom and the kitchen and the fireplace type items where we need water and gas. So I wanna show you. This is the kitchen and I've marked off, I really, you know, just wanted to be overly clear. I went ahead and marked off where the island is gonna go and then within that where the sink is gonna go. And I also taped down the exact faucets that we ordered because all of that has been ordered already. Oh, if you missed that video, I'll leave it. We finalized all of the appliances, all of the plumbing items, the toilets, the tubs, all of that stuff. Uh, I'll leave that video linked for you if you missed it. And also just marked off where the refrigerator and the oven range is going to sit so that they can run the drains and water lines and gas lines there. We've already roughed in the drain for the sink and that was the last thing that they did yesterday. So they're coming back today to do the kind of holes in the floor for the water that's gonna come into the sink. So that's all good. And then in the guest bathroom, the framers are gonna be finishing framing out the guest bathroom when they start the addition since it's literally shares a wall and there's a lot of changes we made and we made, ran out of wood when they were working on the interior project of the main house. So they're gonna do all of that at once. But this wall is done. I actually had to take off this beadboard uh, because one, this was their kitchen. That beadboard particularly was in really rough shape. So I, so I knew I was gonna have to replace it in patches where there was still gonna be the beadboard detail. Uh, so I took this off for them. So I taped up the guest bathroom tub faucet and also put the primary bathroom information behind here so they have it when they do that. So this is the tub running along the windows and then the toilet is gonna sit next to it and I just evenly spaced them. So there was plenty of room from the tub the toilet and then the vanity that we found. I don't think you guys saw that vanity yet. You did see it if you saw my flea market video over on my vlog channel. I did actually find an old phonograph cabinet that I'm going to be transforming into a vanity. It had the perfect shape on the outside. It definitely needs a lot of work. We're gonna have to work on it a lot, but it's really, really sturdy. So it's gonna be able to support the sink and a piece of stone that I wanna put on top. So that's gonna go right here. And it's only 33 inches, but I left 40 inches for it right here which I think is is gonna be perfect give a little breathing room for the pretty legs so it's not like shoved up against the wall over here in order for them to pour the slab in the foundation they had to have the rough in especially of the drainage the water is actually going to go up above and come down but the drains obviously have to float down into the concrete underneath so out here you can see all of the pipes so the pipes run from underneath the house run this way to the washer and dryer underneath the closet in the foundation back here to the primary bathroom i'm kind of standing in the middle of the bathroom right now this is the tub that's pi those pipes over there are the shower and then you turn and this is going to be the, the two double sinks for the vanity and then there's the toilet in like behind a wall i've kind of hit it in the in the primary bathroom so the concrete guys are actually ready to come back and push all of the rest of that rock and base into this area now that it's roughed in so that they create a nice level base and then they're gonna pour the concrete next week and we're gonna have finally have a foundation. I wanna show you guys why they weren't here. Progress, because we're thinking that they're gonna be finished prepping for concrete uh, this week and they're gonna pour the slab, the concrete on top uh, on Tuesday. So this is their little bobcat that they've been using to move around this rock, this base, that's what they call it is base. It's like a rock mixture to create the base for the concrete. And this is how they do it. They bag it and then the concrete goes on top and this stuff when it gets wet is like, almost like concrete, like it's super solid. Look how solid! It's like concrete, like it's super hard. You guys saw last that the plumbers were out. They were working down here to fill it with the base. So they finished all of that over there and then they brought the base up to the house and then they're kind of working on this area right now. So the ones around the pipes. My contractor just left and insulation and air conditioning have been an ongoing conversation. It's actually been a lot bigger conversation than I had imagined. And a lot of you guys were asking about insulation. Like, where's the insulation? What's the insulation? You're doing it wrong. And I was like, wait. <laughs> 
I was like, wait, we're still talking about it. We're trying to find balance and the best solution to make the house as energy efficient um, as possible without ruining things. So as you guys know, our house was built in 1910, the main part here. And they didn't have insulation in 1910, at least, I mean, I wasn't around for that, but I imagine they didn't. Um, but what they did have is air. So what they did was they sided the outside of the house on the exterior of the two by fours. And then on the inside, they put shiplap, which is why you see all of the shiplap. So inside is five inches of air and air is the best insulator. Our house, exterior walls, interior walls, all of that had no insulation. They had put fiberglass, that pink stuff that rolls out. They did put that in the ceiling. I think when they put the air conditioning unit in, and they also put the metal roof. So the metal roof is definitely gonna heat up and it heats up the attic so it would heat up the house. So it makes sense why later on they put that. There's a guy coming out next week to talk to my contractor about what our options are for injectable foam. What they're gonna do to my understanding is drill a hole in the shiplap from the inside and then blow insulation in to the house. So yes, we will have insulation. It's just been trying to figure out the best way to do it, whether we were going to buy it and roll it, take everything off and roll it, or foam it, or inject it, or foam it, take it off and foam it. It, it was a big thing. The attic is where we're gonna see the most savings because that metal is gonna heat up. So if you guys were curious about insulation, yes, if you were curious about why there's no insulation already, it's because our house was built in 1910. And you guys saw that I picked up the stain. We're gonna try this out, I wanna test I don't want to stain until all of the doors are ready to be stained, um, but I do want to test it because I'm, you know, impatient. But I think that this looks really close. I want to see what it looks like on this wood in particular. And we will condition the wood again too. I just want to try a little bit. You can see a lot of the yellow in the wood coming through. So we may actually have to test a couple of them, but that was a good first shot. Look at that. This is the decking. You can just see so much of the yellow in this pine. I think it's pine. I don't know. Okay, so I mean, I'm definitely going to be spending a lot of time scraping all of this paint off, but this stripper does work. So I am really happy with it and I think it's worth it for us to do the front door and then research other people that can just strip them in those like stripping baths that they have. I guess this video was a lot of projects in the works. I feel like so much is happening with plumbing and the addition and the windows and the exterior and working on the doors. And we're just kind of like taking it piece by piece and giving each project the time that it deserves. This house is the biggest DIY project I have ever done. And it's got all of these little parts that need to happen. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm gonna keep stripping this door for today until it starts to rain on me and keep updating you guys about things that are happening in the addition because they're still back there working. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you are not already subscribed, it's getting louder, subscribe to the channel and I will see you guys next Sunday for another video. <laughs> Bye guys. The plumbers were here earlier and they were mad at the concrete people because they broke a pipe and it was like the, all of this like drama earlier. I was like, really guys? Like, get it together. Stop complaining. Let's just build a house. <laughs>